So, as most of you viewers know, the world is facing some pretty big climate-related challenges. And really, we can put solar panels on roofs all we want, but the best solution is to have as many solutions as possible all at once, from people all over the world with ideas for startups and most importantly, out-of-the-box thinking. You see, startups, they don't need necessarily millions of dollars in R&D to come up with complete new innovative solutions. And to get to help these people get to the market, there are platforms like Climate Launchpad, that's basically a competition that trains people to attract angel investors, better present themselves, and succeed in their startup ventures. So at Ask Clean Technica, we were at Climate Launchpad uh, about a week ago now, and some of these startups, what they came up with is absolutely incredible. And here are some of the startups that piqued our interest the most. So the first one we want to mention, Energrape. They actually ended up winning third place, so can't go wrong there. In any case, you've heard of solar panels, you've heard of those black panels you put on the roof uh, to collect, to, to heat water, right? Well, they came up with something very innovative, and that is panel, geothermal panels that you place in underground garages, subway tunnels, metro tunnels, anything that's underground. So we developed uh, what we call a geoenergy panel. So it's like a panel. Uh, you place it indoor on the parking walls and it will bring renewable heating and cooling for the building. You see, uh, you may have noticed that if you enter an underground parking lot, it's really warm for some reason, right? Well, it's not for some reason. It's That's the basics of geothermal energy. And what Energave has done, they found a way, a very cheap way, to absorb all that energy and bring it up to the building to heat the building. Or conversely, uh, in the summer, if you have those panels in the building itself, you can passively cool the building. Like I said, the name of this startup is Energape and they are located in Switzerland. And why I'm saying that this could be the next solar panel is because after you've put solar panels on the roof, what's next? In, in the case of large buildings that have underground structures, you can now also generate heat from that with these panels. And uh, it's, we test it in the lab and it's pretty efficient. Like one panel can uh, produce 250 kilowatt hours of heat or cooling. That's quite a bit. So it's quite a bit, yeah. Uh, one panel costs uh, 150 euros and can produce up to 250 kilowatt hours of energy. And while this is not enough uh, to heat the entire building, it can get you up to 85% there. And from that point, you just uh, you use electricity to get you the, re the rest of the way. And if that electricity is clean, well, you just reduce your emissions to zero. While getting rid of gas in places like California may be fairly simple, in a lot of the colder countries, it's much harder because all the alternatives are still not that efficient and much more expensive. And while this solution by Energrave is more expensive than natural gas to implement, um, it's much cheaper than all the other current non-gas alternatives. And in the end, uh, just because of the usage cost, because you don't have to continue uh, buying gas, eventually it will even be cheaper. In the long run, it's basically cheaper than gas. And that's perfect. This isn't just some kind of lab experiment either. They already have a prototype and it's quite functional. So within the next couple of years, this could actually be realized. Could you actually tell us how you came up with this idea? It's so unusual. Actually, I'm a civil engineer and I'm working in uh, geotechnical engineering. So geotechnical are, is it's the, the kind of stuff you do underground, you know. And, uh, and the idea originally came for tunnels and then it, we derived it for underground parking. So I guess it's my geotechnical uh, engineering stuff, stuff that, that came with, with, this, with this kind of weird uh, idea. Now, while this wasn't part of their original presentation, my natural conclusion is that if this is also applied to Elon Musk's idea of boring tunnels, boring company tunnels, then you can have many tunnels going uh, multiple layers all under the different buildings and with small pipes bring all that energy up to the buildings to heat them. And since this can all be retrofitted to existing tunnels and existing parking lots, underground parking lots, it's just the natural evolution of this technology. Microcatch. Next, we have a clean tech startup that has slightly less to do with climate change, but still has a lot to do with clean tech. And what do they want to clean? Microplastics. 
Thank you, Hanan, for having us. My name is Jana, and this is Joao, and we are the co-founders of the MicroCatch, together with our other teammates. So essentially what we're doing is we have created a microplastic filter to filter the microfibers that are being released from washing our clothing. One of the greatest sources of microplastics is actually washing clothes. Some people might not know that while cotton is a natural fiber, um, Polyester, nylon, acrylics, and spandex, materials like that are actually made of microplastic fibers all put together. And whenever you wash those clothes, as many as 700,000 microplastic fibers can be released. And all of that then goes into the sewage. And while sewage treatment plants try to filter some of that out, it's basically like trying to take out the egg ingredient after you've baked the cake. Yeah, so at the moment, washing machines don't have any filter for uh, for uh, microfibers. They have their usual. At all. They have a usual lean filter. Most people don't clean it, uh, oh. but it's not it's not targeting small particles as we do. In any case, the aptly named startup MicroCatch has come up with a very interesting solution to this, which is a filter that you place either directly into the washing machine or add onto an existing washing machine, and it filters all the microfibers. Their current one-stage prototype already cleans up to 80% of the microfibers, and that should increase further once they have finished their two-stage prototype that they're still currently working on. We have our first prototype done, uh, which were, we were very happy with it because it filters. We have the percentage uh, that filters up to 80%, so we are happy with that. However, we are now in a phase two where we are developing it to be more smart. So what it does, it becomes more efficient by separating the big particles that waste water treatments can capture, but the smaller ones are the one that we are capturing. Mm -hmm. And like this, we can really create a bigger difference and, uh, the perf and improve the improve, uh, performance of our prototype. Hopefully one day these kinds of filters will be found everywhere, not just in washing machines. Currently, MicroCatch is finishing their two-stage prototype proof concept within the next year and a half. So hopefully we'll be hearing more from them by then. The next startup we want to talk about is called Multis Media, and they are in the lab-grown meat market, also known as cultivated meat. As everyone knows, while meat can be extremely tasty and very hard to part for a lot of people, it's also extremely wasteful. Growing an animal requires a lot of water, a lot of crops, a lot of energy, and at the same time, due to processes like respiration and digestion, they also produce a lot of CO2 and methane. Oh, and killing them is presenting some pretty big ethical dilemmas. I mean, if you've ever seen any of it in a factory, it's stuff of nightmares. Yeah, especially because a lot of people turn vegetarian or vegan because of sustainable reasons. I turned vegetarian because of the sustainability, but then I couldn't go on for more than a month because I re needed the meat. And this is a, a good alternative solution. In any case, back to the company. It's called Multis Media, and they don't make lab grown meat. In case I just confused you. They, while they don't make the meat, they are planning to supply the companies that are making the meat. Yeah. This is the, we are not making meat, we are making the growth media that enables the cells to grow. Yeah. So it's the nutrition and the proteins okay. that re the cells require. It enables growing. the growth yes. of yeah, other products. Okay. Medium. Acquiring and programming the stem cells needed is only part of the problem. The other half is trying to feed the cells without a digestive system. We're talking about a very special element here called the growth medium. Right now, the growth medium costs approximately $100 per liter and represents approximately 80% of the costs needed for producing clean, cultivated meat. In order to make clean meat a viable competitive alternative to regular meat, the price needs to go down all the way to $1 per liter. And we need to sell our product at around $1 per liter in order to enable the cultivated meat to compete with the conventional meat. Okay so that it's not going to be more expensive to buy sustainable meat. While we're not there yet, Multis Media has found a way to bring the price down by nearly 80%. And while they're not willing to give us an exact number because this is based off of preliminary data, significant progress has been made here nonetheless, and it's very, very exciting. The way Multis Media has achieved this is by altering yeast to produce a complex protein that's needed for growth. And because it's yeast, they can use, make use of the fermentation process to then extract that protein. Basically, from the outside, the factory producing growth medium for meat will look very similar to a factory producing beer. 
Now, if this sounds familiar to you, that's probably because the Impossible Burger does something very similar. They also genetically altered yeast, but to produce something that's usually found in soybeans in minute quantities, something called heme. And basically, they altered yeast to also produce this heme in much larger quantities, and then they also used the fermentation process to extract it. In some ways, it's already been done for years to extract the proteins that are found in milk and eggs. Only in the case of fake meat, they use it to create and extract heme. And in the case of clean meat, they use it to create proteins that are needed for, to grow muscle tissue cells without the actual animal. Currently, the company is attempting to lower the costs further. And by 2021, they hope to be able to start producing a limited number of growth factors that can then be scaled up further. After that, the company will start developing growth factors for non-mammalian cells, like uh, fish and poultry like chicken. The possibilities of this technology are limitless. And while not in a presentation, let me give you some interesting examples to ignite your imagination. In Japan, there is a delicacy called fugu. It's made from a poisonous blowfish, and it takes a chef many, many years of training to get a license. Because one small mistake, and the poison will leak out onto the meat and kill the customer, which is obviously problematic. But in the future, we could just grow the meat of the fish without any of the other organs and the poison. Or if we have the DNA of extinct species like the dodo or the heath hen, which is actually where Thanksgiving started with, not turkeys, but the heath hen went extinct, probably because they were very tasty. Nonetheless, we can, with their DNA, we can start rediscovering meat that hasn't been eaten by people for decades or even centuries. As a matter of fact, bringing back a extinct species is much more difficult than just growing its meat in a lab. Oh, and another fun example. Also, in terms of health as well, because with the cultivated meat, you can actually design what percentage of fat you want, what percentage of different types of saturated amino acids. And Interesting. It's a whole of, different world of Yeah, you, you can know, design proteins. everything. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about designer meat here, people. In any case, all of this is part of synthetic biology, which is a fascinating subject that we will dive deeper into in future videos and articles. A really exciting field, yeah, and uh, I think is. a lot of people don't understand what it, the cap what the potential of it is. Exactly, so. yeah. It's what we think kind of the next sustainability and biotechnology are very related, and yeah. we think biotechnology. I mean, we really program computers now all the time, but we're only now starting to understand, and soon we might actually start being able to mm -hmm. do it with DNA yeah. and like proteins and mm -hmm. so it's really we're yeah, yeah we're pretty much 50 years behind so they discovered yeah, exactly. the electron in 1900s dna in 50s and yeah. like if you think about what we can exactly. do with programming yeah. now yeah definitely so it's an amazing yeah. hot topic yeah. yeah to conclude this video at climate launchpad there were tons of really amazing startups that are definitely worth looking into and investing in for our full coverage on climate launchpad please check out cleantechnica.com all our articles should be easy to find there other than that, please give this video a thumbs up if you think more people should see it. And I hope you're subscribed because that's how you get to see the latest before everyone else. Other than that, I wish you guys a wonderful day and till next time. See ya.